Hi guys, today I'm going to go through rates of reaction and we're going to talk about specifically the five different ways that you can increase the rate of a reaction uh, pressure, temperature, surface area, concentrations and catalyst. Before we even start talking about rates of reaction I just want to revise quickly just a general idea of what a chemical reaction is. It's the idea you've got a substance, so maybe this little red circle here and something else and there's some kind of chemical reaction so there's like a, a before and there's an after so in this case the red and the blue uh, dots maybe they're representing different elements they come and they bond together so there's something before something afterwards somehow we've got to try and get these two things to meet and that's basically the the key idea to rates of reaction is how can you get these two things to meet to try and become this here Okay, so firstly, one thing that can affect the rate of a reaction is the pressure or the volume of the container. And if you think about it, if you've got a large volume uh, and you've got all these different atoms inside, uh, uh, there's, there's lots of space for the atoms to move around, so they're at a low pressure. If you get this volume and you shrink it down to something small over the same number of atoms inside, so you actually create a smaller volume, the pressure actually increases. And as these atoms are moving around, there's more chance with a higher pressure of maybe two of them meeting up and chemically reacting. Whereas here, there's so much space in between the atoms that as they're moving around, there's less probability of maybe uh, two different atoms meeting. So the smaller the volume or the higher the pressure, the quicker or the more, uh, the faster the rate of reaction. Now temperature can have an effect on the rate of reaction. Where well, you've got a low temperature, like here, the atoms aren't really moving around very fast. So it'll take a long time for maybe these two atoms to meet and possibly chemically react. Whereas if you've got a high temperature, the atoms are going crazy, they're moving around all over the place, and it's very likely that they'll bump into each other and react. So with a higher temperature, you're actually increasing the probability of the two different atoms, the little blue and the little red dots, meeting and then chemically reacting. Now surface area can also have an impact on the rate of reaction. Now here, on the left, I've got a solid and the little blue uh, atoms are trying to uh, react with the little red dots here but the dots in the middle here well they're inside the solid so there's no way that these atoms are going to react with anything inside here so this has actually got a, a smaller surface area than the same number of dots here so basically this has been kind of split into four and now the little blue dots can attack in any different direction. They can actually get the, the, the dots that were inside here on the left are now exposed. So there's a higher probability of the blue dots reacting with the, the red dots. So by increasing the surface area, you actually increase the rate of reaction. And it seems odd if you've got something like a tablet and you crush it down so you actually make the individual particles uh, the individual grains of whatever your solid is smaller the actual surface area increases which is something st students find difficult to kind of comprehend the idea that you've got something smaller but the surface area actually the, the total surface area of all the little parts actually becomes much bigger therefore there's a you know, higher chance that one of these atoms is going to bump into uh, uh, one of the red ones and then cause a chemical reaction. A concentration can have a big effect on the rate of reaction. On the left here we've got an, an area equal to the same area we have on the right but there's only one two three little blue atoms and one two three little red atoms so if these are taking a little random walk around the chances of two of these bumping into each other and chemically reacting is really quite low. We're here on the right where I've got a high concentration. Uh, the probability of atoms bumping into each other, like a red and a blue bumping into each other, 
is much, much higher. So the probability of a chemical reaction uh, with a higher concentration is much higher. So that means the rate of reaction actually becomes much higher. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is something called ca a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is not part of the chemical reaction, but it can help increase the rate of reaction. On the left here, I've got my container and there's no catalyst against the wall. But on the right here, there is. And what, what the catalyst is doing is it's making the little red particles stick against the, the wall here. And what's going to happen is, eventually, all the wall would completely fill up with the little red dots. So as soon as one of the blue dots touches the wall, it's going to hit uh, one of the red dots and chemically react. So by having a catalyst, it can greatly increase the probability of two different uh, compounds or elements or whatever they are uh, bumping into each other and chemically reacting. If you find this video useful, don't forget to watch. Subscribe! Yes! My dad is a clever man. Bye!